Have you ever asked yourself, what would I do if I won the lottery and I wanted the ultimate daily driver? What would I buy? There are many more options than you'd think available to you. There's the new Ferrari Pura Sangue, there's the Lamborghini Urus, there's an RS6. But recently, Bentley got in touch and said, Seb, would you like to see what it's like to live with the new Bentley Bentayga S? Thank you very much, Bentley Monaco. Very kind of you. Let's do just that. So I'm going to be driving this car for about a week taking you on all the various daily adventures, trying to simulate what the owner of one of these cars would do as best as I can, see what it's like to properly live with. First things first, we're gonna be going away for a weekend adventure to Saint-Tropez, which I guess a lot of people who drive these are doing. So this massive thing here is my podcast gear. And usually the issue that we have with this bag is being able to fit it in the boot of the various cars that we're driving around in. But with this, oi, this thing's heavy. It's absolutely no problem. Then we've got clothes. I think you'll be able to hear what's in here. Yay, <laughs> essential as well. And there we go. Unfortunately, Valentin is not gonna be able to join me for the weekend. So I'm gonna be on the GoPro trying to, yeah, bring you really as kind of natural as possible through this adventure with me. First things first, hour and a half drive. Let's go. And so here we are then, I am joined by Marion. Hello. <laughs> and we are on the road. So far we've been driving for an hour and 23 minutes and we're doing an average of 14 liters per 100 kilometers. The MPG conversion will be on the screen right now. I can't do that conversion just by, a, whoa, this guy's coming over. Anyways, this is where the Bentley side of this car completely comes to life. So it is so unbelievably quiet in here with the double glazed windows, which are so thick. As soon as we get to a toll and need to put the window down, you're kind of reminded that there is an outside world around you. I'm also fully in cruise control, so automatic cruise control, which will adapt to the speed of the car ahead of me. And I've got, I'm not sure if you guys can see it from the angle right now, a really nice head up display. It's perfect to drive along on these long drives. I've got a little button down on the left of my seat down there, which if I press, I can choose from like, I think seven or eight different types of massages. So I'm gonna do a stretching massage. Marion also has one in the passenger seat, if you want to. And uh, yeah, overall, it just feels like a really lovely place to cruise. It is so quiet, I could whisper and you would hear me perfectly. So yeah, so far, first activity is the long drive over to Saint-Tropez, motorway driving, not too interesting to show you guys much more of this further. How's your massage? Yeah? Yeah, you enjoying it? <laughs> One thing, which is a very specific problem, often on this type of road trip, you end up getting yourself a little sandwich so you don't lose time. But I've never felt so bad eating a sandwich and being so careful because I am absolutely terrified of getting crumbs anywhere in this car. So as a road trip car, either you're wealthy enough not to mind or you have to be extremely careful. However, this is a perfect opportunity to test out the comfort mode in the Bentley Bentayga. So there's Bentley mode, which is kind of normal, sport, which is something, for example, Rolls Royce would never even dream of having in one of their cars, and comfort. So right now, as I eat my lovely little sandwich extremely carefully, Marion is doing some work in the passenger seat. This car has its own Wi-Fi. What's amazing with this, 544 horsepower, when you need to overtake somebody, it's so effortless, even though you're lugging around over two tons. So, road trip car, thus far, first kind of aspect we've tested, massive pass. Welcome home, we have made it. 12.9 liters per 100 kilometers. That's the final, not bad actually, not bad for a car of this size. Hello, hello, hello. It's okay, I'll join up with you guys in a little bit. Okay, next step, now I've just briefly dropped off my stuff at the house, is to go food shopping, to get supplies for the house. I got my friend Fab with me. We are having like eight friends over at the I house. I think so, eight, yeah. That's so, right. perfect car to go do the, do the supermarket run yeah, in, we'll I feel. fill the boot up, I'm sure. I think we've got plenty of space. Okay, back at the car. One thing I have noticed is this key, it's really nice. I mean, the finishing on it is, is pretty awesome, but it's huge. So every time you put it in your pocket or something like that, it just takes up your entire pocket. And yeah, anyways, nitpicking, but is what it is. Okay, now we put the shopping 
in the boot, which is not going to be a problem at all because the boot is massive. Ah, how practical this car is. Ooh, I've got some friends in the car now. Their first time in it, and yes, nice. Yes, yes. nice. <laughs> they don't speak much. It's very good. <laughs> what <Watch the> car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. We, we, they were t saying to me that it was amazing. The comfort you can have. They're big guys. Every in the back is like 190, and uh, and you have loads of space. You have your little screen in the back for them to look at. But when you want, you whack it in sport, like I'm in now. Yes, you're going to get through a tank of fuel in about 37 seconds. However, it is very good fun. So, approved, guys. Yes. Approved yes. from my friends. Yeah, it passes the, the mate's test. Yes? yes? Yeah, it's perfect. Fantastic. Right, another test. We're going to see if a paddle board can fit in the Bentayga. We tried a surfboard in the Continental GT. So, because this is the Bentayga, we're going to try a paddle board. So, let's get started. Open the boot. Okay, so the seats, the back seats, are gonna have to go down, because that's not gonna work. Is it a button here? How does it work? Aha! Aha! Ta-da! The back of the seats here isn't the exact, it's a bit hard, it's not the same leather as the rest of the seats, to protect the rear of the car. Okay, let's try this. I don't think this is gonna work. We have two problems here. One is, it doesn't fit flush. The second is, I'm not wealthy enough to try and push it any further and ruin the seats and have to repair them. So, yeah, if you really wanted to, maybe there's a way to make it fit, but I'm afraid if you're a huge stand-up paddleboard fan, maybe you'll need to consider a van or something different. Bentley Mentega is the most useless piece of consumer advice. It's probably not the ideal car to go stand up paddle boarding in. There you go, always here for useful information for you guys during this very complete test of the Bentley Ventega. Okay guys, I apologize Attention. for my... Frontière en vue. Bonjour, I apologize for my t-shirt and I also probably look like a mess. I just finished playing tennis and it's really warm over here. Really using this car as the daily, but I'm about to go pick up my grandmother. I'm having lunch with her. She's never been in a car of this type and she's quite the character, so I wanted to pick her up and see her reaction to the Bentley Bentayga. There's a button to lower the car. Okay, I think it's lowered. Let's do this. Et c'est bon. Et c'est quelle voiture. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça? <laughs> c'est une Bentley, grand-mère. Une? Bentley. J'aime bien cette couleur. Tu l'as choisi ou tu l'as eu comme ça? Non, c'est pas la mienne, la voiture. Ah. C'est Bentley qui me l'ont prêté. Pourquoi oh, ils sont si gentils avec toi? <laughs> Alright, we're back in the car now. It now says we've got 600 kilometer range. But I've interestingly found a trip that obviously hasn't been updated, which indicates over the last 1600 kilometers, this car has averaged 19 liters per 100 kilometers. So we're going to put on the screen right now what that represents in miles per gallon. But uh, yeah, for a daily driver, that's pretty aggressive. Okay guys, we're now on a little road that I know well, and this is what this car's about. So you cruise around most of the time in your normal mode, full comfort, and then when you want to, you go into sport, you go on the paddles, and then... Oh! <laughs> it's pretty quick, it's pretty fun. Not much body roll, look at this. You can go through these corners nice and fast. So when you're on your way home, you can also enjoy the car. I mean, I don't even want to think how much fuel we're using, but yeah, it's a really cool aspect of this car, that extra character. And this was the perfect example. I was driving home, I was in normal mode the whole way here, and then you get onto that little bit of road and you go, you know what, I want to have fun and have that noise. Yeah. It just doesn't shut any doors the way this car has been developed. You can do pretty much most things and it's pretty great in most scenarios, to be honest. What's up, legends? You can probably see my really ugly face right now. This car starts at 193,000 euros, no options, 257,000 with options. This color is called Orange Flame. 
it's awesome. You can see that it's a Bentayga S because it's got a little S logo right here. What do you get on the S? You get black packs, see all of here, here, all of this is finished in black. You get some carbon, so big carbon wing, new exhaust, and the carbon, uh, the, sorry, it's not actually carbon, it's just black diffuser on the back. Huge thanks to Bentley Monaco, of course, and everyone involved in lending me this car. We've got new 22 inch rims, which are, of course, on Pirelli's best tires out there. Uh, and then we've got, yeah, full black pack and still those crystal headlights, which I think look so cool. Obviously, it's the facelifted version of the Bentayga. So new front bumper, grille, all that jazz. Very cool looking from the outside. 11,000 euro optional carbon ceramic brakes. Now, it does have a pretty massive boot. You press the B here. You know, obviously, this is one of the reasons why the Bentayga is so convenient. You got this huge boot and some kind of cool gadgets like you can lower it. If you press that, can you tell? The car's lowering down. There you go. This is actually really convenient for many reasons, but one could be if you've got a dog, where we used to have an old dog and she'd always struggle to get into various cars. So that could be one reason. And then another cool thing you've got here is the tow hook, electric tow hook, which can just pop out right there. There you go. I mean, you, it's kind of self-explanatory, but we're gonna put that back in, which is convenient either if you're parking, so that if someone hits you, they're not actually gonna hit the car. Still got the same engine as the standard V8. Mantega, so 544 horsepower twin turbocharged V8. This one's also got an orange interior, Nime sound system. Look at this. Oh, that's sick. So this must be a key holder. Let's see. They put a hole so that the Bentley B sticks through. Perfect. That's, Perfect. that's pretty cool. So as you could tell, as I came in, keyless go, press this start button, and this is also your toggle to go between modes. Right now we're in Bentley mode, which is normal. There's sport, there's comfort, custom, so you can set it up. Then there's all sorts of off-road modes, whether you're in the desert, snow, sand, forest. There's everything you need. You press the B, pull that down, and you're into drive. If you then pull it down again, you go into manual. You can see M1 there. If I put it down, you go into D. You do have these two pad paddles. Instantly into CarPlay and all that jazz. Super easy to use. Handbrake off. And off we go. Everything you touch feels pretty incredible. Um, the one thing that I would say feels slightly under par than the rest are the indicators here. So like, you know, everything to open and close these vents, um, all your volume adjustment, everything you touch is really luxurious. But these indicator stalks, they feel straight out of an Audi plastic. My brother-in-law has an Audi A3 and they're literally exactly the same stalks so it's the only thing that i've touched that i thought okay that's a bit under par basically just been driving in in bentley mode it's very impressive for an suv in terms of like sporty feel but to be honest there's this obsession with super sporty suvs at the moment i, I get it it's, it is very cool but personally you know if you're driving your suv around you drive it like this three quarters of the time, which is what I've seen over the last week. It is nice when you're on a road that you know well, or you're in a rush or whatever, to have that sport mode. You know, there are some trick things with this, like I believe it's called a torque vectoring system, where it will basically break on the inner rear wheel of the corner that you're on. That will help give more grip and feel to the front end. There's little things like that which are pretty cool. There's not much body roll for a car this heavy. And obviously you have 544 brake horsepower, which is pretty impressive. But again, it's not how you're gonna be driving the car most of the time. What you do appreciate, however, for example here, I'll pop it in comfort mode. And when you've got all of these speed bumps, we're gonna be driving it on a tiny little road now because it's the fastest way to get you to the train station. But I think it's an interesting kind of test. When you're on these tiny roads, what is this car actually like? But these speed bumps are usually so brutal. I've done every car possible um, that I've had access to, I've brought on this road. And these speed bumps are horrible, whereas with this, not a problem. And the air suspension just gobbles them up like they're nothing. You're in your little bubble, completely unaware of what's going on around you, yet you still have a bit of a beast at the ready when you need it. So gadget wise, uh, a few really cool things, like I discovered the night vision camera which is not going to work too well now but see right there that at night is actually really cool turning radius test most cars can get around this in one go this one can't because it is 
massive. Uh, the steering is really light for such a heavy car. I mean, how you can end up steering it with one finger like this, I find pretty unbelievable. Main addition you've got to the S now compared to other Bentegas is the uh, Alcantara. So like this one has the Alcantara steering wheel, the seats are Alcantara, adds I guess that little extra bit of sportiness. It does shrink around you a little bit. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's, you know, amazing how you don't feel the size of the car or anything like that because that wouldn't be strictly true. But um, way tiny little roads these. But yeah, and then when you do put it in sport mode, a manual, like this, you get a bit of that V8 grumble. Yeah, you can hear, yeah, because the windows are so thick, you don't hear it much, but listen. There you go, you can hear it a little bit. It's not gonna be one of the best sounding cars out there, but it does sound nice. It's got a really nice cold start sound, actually. Anyways, we're on tiny little roads, so let's go back into normal mode back into automatic and cruise. The Bentayga was kind of with obviously the Cayennes and Macans and stuff were out, but in this super SUV category with loads of power, kind of one of the first, it needed maybe a little bit of an update and that's what this feels like. Unfortunately, the time has come. <laughs> this long-term loan or long-term week-long loan is coming to an end. I have thoroughly enjoyed being with this car, I mean, stating the obvious, there is a fantastic car, but I've gotten to kind of understand it more. I feel like definitely from my perspective, this is a car I didn't quite comprehend, understand, or see the necessity in at all. Now there isn't a necessity in it, but I understand the want for the luxury of it. So, you know, at first I thought it's based on the same platform as many other cars. It's a sporty, big SUV. Is it really gonna be sporty? Um, how does it fit in and compared to the others? But actually it's kind of, what my conclusion is after using it for a while, kind of fits in its own segment in a way, where it's an extremely fast luxury SUV, which also has the sporty side to it. One of the things I've really noticed, and we're just on a really bumpy road now, I don't think I've really ever been in a car which has as big of a difference between its comfort mode, in terms of suspension, this is, between comfort and sport modes. It's insane, when you flip from one to the other, you may even be able to see it on the camera. There you go, I just went into sport and it starts shaking. I mean, we did happen to conveniently go over a bump. Anyways, between that, how convenient it is, and just how well built everything feels, I've definitely, really enjoyed this time with the Bentayga S and I'm really sad to be giving it back. I am not gonna miss the size of it around town and that's a specific problem to hear. If you have all the money in the world and you have the opportunity to buy one of these and actually use it and drive it regularly, what a car, what a machine. Okay, can I open without touching anything? That would be a shame, just as you're about to give it back. Anyways, the time has come. The Bentley dealership is right behind you right there. I'm gonna have to give these keys back. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I have videos of actually spending more time with a specific car and you were able to be submerged in the life of a Bentley owner. I really enjoyed being the person that could bring you on that experience because I enjoyed spending time with this car. So thank you so much. Subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you very soon. Cheers guys, bye bye. This is the new Rolls-Royce Ghost and it's a bit like Kensington Palace and the Ghost is aimed at the younger Rolls-Royce buyer. Doesn't mean it's cheap though. <laughs> it starts from £250,000 and in this video I'm going to give it a jolly good reviewing. Let's start this video by talking about the new Ghost design. So every part of this car 
is completely new. Nothing is carried over from the old Ghost, and it's bigger than before as well. So it's slightly wider. In fact, at its widest point, it's almost two meters wide. They have at the back, they have tapered it in so it doesn't have a big bulbous bottom. The back end is quite plain looking, but in places it is lifted by plenty of chrome right here and around the tail lights and chrome surrounds for the exhaust. And I use the car sticker truth to just illustrate that within there are two proper exhaust pipes on each side. Moving down the side, we come to the alloy wheels. So they start at 19 inches, which is way too small for this car. These are the top size, the 21 inches. And I think at the very least, you've got to have these fitted, otherwise it'll just look under wheeled. This car has a very strong shoulder line, gives it plenty of presence from the side. And once again, we've got chrome just highlighting it so it isn't just a big slab of black and huge chrome door handles, which are in the middle of the car because obviously, look, hinged rear doors makes it dead easy to get in. We'll come to the interior in a moment. I mean, it's a lovely looking interior, isn't it? Just shut the doors, which is done electrically. Go on, five and a half meters. But you can get an extended version, which is even longer. It's 170 millimeters longer. Now, here's the controversial bit, the front. I think it looks quite a bit more aggressive than the old Ghost. Here's a picture of the old Ghost. What do you think? You know, I said that every panel's new. There is one thing that isn't, is the spirit of ecstasy. The inside of this is gorgeous. The quality of the materials is impeccable. The leather is just so soft. The stitching, even though it's done by hand, is just so straight. The wood veneers, they're solid and thick. This one has a unique detail in it. It's like shiny flex. It's gorgeous. And everything that looks like metal is metal. They're solid. It just feels wonderful. This is solid as well. I like this metal strip here on the top of the grab handle for the door. Even the door pockets, look, they're lined with leather. Contrasting leather as well, the orange to match this on the dash. I like the dials as well. They're behind this glass screen and they're part normal physical dials. So the outer ring and the little illuminated bits for the increments of speed. But then the actual dial itself and the needle is digital, but it looks old fashioned and analog. It's great. Infotainment system, it's basically BMW's iDrive because BMW owns Rolls-Royce. But with a Rolls-Royce understated font on it, it's easy to use. You can use the swivel wheel or you can use it as a touchscreen as well. This thing is just glorious to sit in and it's impossible to find anything to complain about apart from one thing for the indicators and the windscreen wipers and the electrical operation of the steering wheel. It does just feel more cheap but like normal car-ish. And I found another thing as well, a little bit of a crease in this bit of leather. It's the only imperfection I can find. It's as if this particular cow spent its time like leaning up the fence. Dead easy, you wanna let air in and out of the air vents, you pull the organ stops. The steering wheel, it looks like a piece of artwork, yet there are still buttons on it, but they're, they're just blended in nicely. It's a great, great job. The little speakers around for your Bluetooth, that's metal. This is metal and this is leather, your grab handle. This lighting here is like something that you'd find in Claridge's hotel. And the seats, huge armchairs. Obviously they are electrically operated and almost infinitely adjustable. You could spend hours in these seats. So, as I said at the beginning, this isn't a long wheelbase version. Look, I've got absolutely loads of knee room. I don't know why you'd need the extended wheelbase version. It really doesn't need to be any longer. Now, the opulence just continues in the back. So once again, the air vents around solid metal, lovely with your organ stops. You've got your climate control here as well. It's just gorgeous and all the materials are super expensive feeling, thick carpets. You can really relax. This actually has a three-seater configuration, which means that if you really needed to, you could squeeze someone into the middle seat which would be very in Rolls-Royce. There's a little grab handle 
in the back of the front seat so you can actually hold on when you're getting into the car. One thing this car has is the embossed Spirit of Ecstasy on the back of the picnic tables. It also has, check it out, the rear entertainment system. So you get a big screen on each side and you can control all the car's entertainment through this rear screen using the controller under here, which is just like that in the front. I'll just put that away. Another extra this car has is this, look, a fridge. And I really like what they've done with this. Normally the fridges you have in cars vertically, and then you have your little champagne glasses. And I like the way they're held in by expensive feeding clips. You don't just get normal blinds in a Rolls Royce. You have actual curtains to open the rear doors and then you just pull onto the handle and it opens using a motor. It's actually got a little gyroscope in that so even if you're on a, an incline or a decline it can actually control the door and the speed at which it opens so it doesn't suddenly just fling open or go too slowly. So the low capacity is 507 litres which is quite a lot but you do get even more boot space, nicely trimmed, luxurious carpet which is nicer than in my flat and this scuff plate here so you don't damage your paintwork when you're lifting things in and out. The opening is quite wide which is handy because I'm going to have to climb in here to search for, you can get a starlight headliner, we've got hundreds of LEDs just in the roof lining which mimic a night sky and if you wait long enough you'll see the occasional shooting star. So much work has been done in this car to make it as quiet as possible. Look how thick the double glazing is on the windows. Now, on top of that, you've got 100 kilos of soundproofing material throughout the car's cabin. There's even soundproofing within the tyres. But Rolls went one step further. It actually measured the sound frequency resonance of all the components of the car and made sure that they matched up so that you don't get slightly different sounds standing out within the car. Just almost every single part of the car. In fact, they got to one stage where they made it too quiet that it made passengers feel a little bit car sick because you didn't get the sensation that you were actually moving. So they dulled a little bit of sound back in to keep everyone nice and comfortable. You can raise and lower the Spirit of Ecstasy manually if you want to by pressing a button on the car's infotainment system. And you can actually get it in solid silver or gold plated. They might be thinking, wait a minute. So this ghost logo here. Now Rolls Royce could have just painted that on, but that would have been too easy. Instead, they took 10,000 man hours designing and developing this very special feature, which actually involves 90,000 laser etched holes in this wooden veneer. And behind that, you've got 152 LED and it shines light through evenly so you get this starlight effect here and when you turn the car off it completely disappears and it comes back when you turn it back on again. This car has the upgraded bespoke audio system so you have 18 speakers and these ones here and so have a really nice metal grill of them which is so sharp you can actually file your nails on them. You get 1300 watts of power there's also two exciter speakers in the roof of the car and it uses the hollow sills to act as a subwoofer to boost the bass and then there's a few microphones dotted about the place to pick up unwanted frequencies and cancel them out so you get a pure clean. The Ghost gets Rolls Royce's new microenvironment purification system. So the car uses sensors and it can tell if you're driving through an environment that is a bit polluted and then it will automatically put the car's ventilation system onto recirculation mode and it diverts the air through a nano fleece filter to remove all those nasty impurities. As with the Rolls Royces, you have an umbrella in each rear door. So for the Ghost, you can actually choose your own design for the umbrella. If you don't put this umbrella back properly and then you shut the car's door, you could be in for £8,000 worth of damage. That's coming from someone who had a Rolls Royce, made that mistake, as with the Phantom and the Cullinan, the Ghost uses Rolls Royce's 6.75 litre twin turbo V12 engine. It has 571 horsepower and 850 newton metres of torque, and it drives all four wheels via an eight speed automatic gearbox. And it's been designed to be super smooth so you don't feel it when you accelerate. From the glass, ooh, look at that. And if I rev it, Finally, see what this Rolls Royce Ghost is like to drive. Not much of a problem in this, the air suspension just deals with them so well. And I can just cruise down my little driveway. Say little, it's probably about half a mile long. 
and I am faced with a slight problem. It's the fact that this car is so long that I might have to have my nose out on the road in order to be able to see what's coming around the corner, but let's find out. It's so, so quiet in here. I can't feel the road beneath me at all. It's like I'm just floating around in utter tranquility. In fact, I imagine this is what it felt like when I was in the room. It's as though this car is like your own amniotic sac. The, the turning circle on this car is still 3.4 meters, which is slightly better than a Phantom, which is 3.8 meters. Oh, the steering is just gentle and easy. This car does have surround view cameras, so they will help me, and obviously parking sensors and stuff. But at the moment, I'm caught behind some truck that's loading. But it doesn't topple over either. It doesn't fill out of its depth. And if you need to get a move on, this engine is pretty powerful. I'm going to floor it. A little bit of a roar from the exhaust. And it does go all right. Oh my gosh. Not 60, 4.6 seconds. But it doesn't actually feel that quick because you're so isolated from the sense of speed. One of the things you have to love about Rolls Royces is that they have their own unique way of doing stuff. For instance, you don't have a rev counter but instead a power reserve gauge. So when you're just tootling along and not really pressing the throttle, you have 100% of power reserve. Seats are super comfy. You can put the massage function on. And one of the things I really like about the massage function is that it just stays on. I'm actually gonna put the cruise control on because it just means that I don't have to worry about setting the pace. The car actually uses a camera and a radar to keep you a safe distance from the car in front. And it'll even work in stop-start traffic there is one thing that is missing from this though. It doesn't have that function where it'll automatically steer to keep you between the white lines. It's a bit of a shame. I don't know why it doesn't have that. Maybe it's something to do with the fact that most people who buy these cars put on a chauffeur and you do want your chauffeur to at least try to earn his money. Click on the pop out banner up there to get a car right to see how much you can save on a new car. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, comment below any kind of other videos you'd like us to do.